it's always a really interesting corrective, me stepping out of the disc office mm -hmm. and, uh, and hearing um, people like yourself speak, Chris. Because um, I was struck when you were talking that um, uh, the, the kind of DIY approach that you've taken is there's probably really great reasons for that. Because I imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, that if you went off to somewhere like the Open Preservation Foundation or the GIST site and there's all this tons and tons of stuff available, it would probably bog you down, I would think. And so you're probably moving faster doing your DIY stuff at this stage, making more progress than you would with too much reference to all that material out there. I don't know. Is that yeah, what you feel? It's, it's, it's a pragmatic, this is what happens doing now, and, and I do. so yeah. I'm not, I, perhaps I'm not seeing the bigger picture at all. Which is uh, so I think that's probably a, you know, <laughs> probably a good way to go to begin with, just in order to make some progress. It's much more important just to take some steps forward and start finding out what the problems are, rather than spending too long worrying, you know, trying to, trying to prepare the way, I think. But, you know, stuck in the JISC office with people around me sort of constantly talking about what we do this, we do this, we set up a program and fund this, that and the other. You kind of think too large sometimes, perhaps. Um, <clears throat> okay. And roll your fingers. What does that mean? <laughs> um, I, well, so thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, always learn things when I go out and talk to, to people, practitioners and the like. Um, and so my current job title um, is Head of Resource Discovery, so, but I used to be uh, run a program, the Digital Preservation Program, which is uh, for about seven years or so. Um, and I wasn't too worried about the kind of territories around preservation, as it says there, um, managing, archiving, curating, preserving, sustaining. Um, for me, uh, it all kind of is one sort of contiguous space. Uh, and you know, people in the past have talked about uh, curation or preservation. And what does it mean? What's the definition? I don't think we should worry about that too much. It's all just stuff that we care about and needs to be looked after over time. Um, and what I've also been doing the last few years is running something called the uh, 4C project, um, which you'll hear more about, which is um, the reason that uh, Jane spotted me. and. Uh, nabbed me for this, so this is what I'm going to focus on, some of the full seed work. Um, maybe it's this way around, is it? I think we're going to focus on the actual small chair. Uh, yeah, sure. There we go, thank you. <coughs> um, so, but of course, um, data management couldn't be a more current issue. Um, I don't know if you, any of you follow the research data man list. Anybody on that? People. Yeah. Uh, this is from yesterday, actually. This is Robin Rice in <coughs> Edinburgh um, talking about the EPSRC policies um, and the need for uh, keeping things for 10 years if you've got the research funding from them. Other research councils following suit. And what does that mean? Well, perhaps that means um, some of it in perpetuity, really, given that it's 10, 10 years from the last use of their research data. Um, and following these kinds of lists, or this list in particular, it's very, very busy, loads of people on it. Really, really important source of data. Um, you can pick up so much. Um, just some of these comments here about uh, Robin's talking about these two concepts. Um, you know, do we, do we talk about keeping bits or do we talk about handing those things on? Uh, I think there's things you can break down there. There's, there's, she says two, I think there's three there, really. You can either keep the bits i.e. Just, just make sure that you know, your files have got integrity going forwards and if there's at some point in the future um, you need to do that um, sort of migration on demand then you can do it that way. That's a perfectly valid way of doing it or, or you might want to you know, think about um, migrating as you go along if you're worried about format, format obsolescence. Or if you don't really have the remit or the ability to do that yourself then this idea about passing it on very, very critical strategy, I think. Uh, you know, are we in the business of doing data curation? Because if we're not, uh, there are lots of people whose business it is. It would be much better just um, working collaboratively, collaboratively with them rather than spending far too long trying to figure it out yourself. Uh, uh, so um, it can be a very technical business. Um, and it is a very technical business. There are lots and lots of considerations um, from a technical perspective. I use this slide uh, rather unkindly somewhat to baffle people um, because there's, there's kind of so much on it and you can't really take it in. Um, 
and it kind of backs up this notion that if you don't really want to get into some of these technical components, most of which seem to end in shon, normalization, <laughs> verification, um, then again, there are people who will do this for you. And, and particularly from a technical point of view, as I, people like maybe the body I mentioned earlier, the Open Preservation Foundation, the OPF, um, the very technically minded uh, community of people. Um, if you visit their website, you'll see there's forums, people kicking around ideas, but from a technical perspective. But um, I'm not really going to be talking about the technical side of things today, not really thinking about them, um, because for me, and for the work that I've been doing and the 4C project's been doing um, around sustainability, just thinking around sustainability, it's, it's not really a technical issue. Uh, it's more of a sort of strategic issue, it's more about We've been focusing on, uh, we started with this notion of cost modeling. Um, and the 4C project is a collaboration to clarify the cost of curation. But that's really only a sort of jumping off point. Um, from the very start, we were thinking that costs, uh, you don't really, can't really think and talk about costs very effectively if you're not talking about benefits, if you're not talking about risk, if you're not talking about sustainability, if you're not talking about value. Um, and so uh, the, the work that we've done um, it's really ended up after two years. It's, fact, it's just finished. It came to an end uh, last month um, after 24 years of activity. Uh, and where we got to towards the end was coming up with this roadmap that we showcased at the conference that Jane was at. Um, and this was our attempt to sort of sketch out in, in, in kind, of, kind of high level this more sort of strategic approach and this more political um, sort of view on how you might sustain uh, curation activity. And there's two bits to that, really. There's, there's sustaining the digital assets themselves, and then the kind of related piece um, about sustaining the curation activity that sustains those assets. And so this vision, um, we now have to sort of confess that this vision was not, not exclusively, but to a large extent was designed to appeal to the European Commission. <laughs> as uh, their money, you know, we've got to uh, give them a little something uh, towards the end of the project. And I say that because um, we've said in five years' time it will be easier to design, you probably can't read this, easier to design or procure more cost-effective and efficient digital curation services because the costs, benefits and business cases will be better understood. Um, and then we added at the end that cost modelling will be part of the planning and management activities of all digital repositories. We sort of sneak that in on the end there. It's, uh, uh, we're not entirely sure that cost modelling will be part of everyone's activities, but we would like to think that it should be. So this vision was essentially, we were trying to say to the Commission, if everyone follows the six messages that we put in this roadmap, if everyone acts upon those messages, uh, it might be that by 2020 there will be this very healthy and sort of vibrant marketplace for digital creation solutions. And that's exactly the, the, the message the Commission wanted to hear. This is one of the reasons we got the funding, in fact, was because they felt that they put a lot of money into digital preservation and curation over the years, over the last 10 years, um, <clears throat> and there, but there didn't seem to be service level um, kind of curation solutions out there that people like Chris, uh, probably like yourselves, uh, other researchers, could just kind of pick up or, or buy in, um, grab off the shelf and just use. So, in some senses, you know, this, this preservation and curation research had sort of kind of failed a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that's the kind of some of the politics behind it. And that's the reason that that's some of the reason that, that vision says what it does. But I think the six messages that we put in the roadmap are more practical than that. And I think they are good messages and they're good messages that institutions um, should think very hard about acting upon as well. And one of the things that Rachel said, um, start to me was um, one of the things that would be good to come out of our discussion today is about how we, you, we, me as individuals, how we talk to our own institutions, how we kind of put that business case across for sustaining curation activity, um, the assets and the services. Uh, and that's what we've been focusing on the 4C project a lot, you know, how do you build this business case, how do you kind of take those steps to argue it. I think these six messages might help with that with a little luck. So the first one, um, identify the value of digital assets and make choices. Um, 
this is um, this usefully kind of highlights this notion of value, which uh, which is absolutely really key, and it's it struck us over the two years of the full seed project that it really usually ends up coming down to this notion of value in one way or another. Um, and so it is a little bit contentious in a way because uh, this first message is about this notion of selection and appraisal, and that's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, to spend time actually looking at your digital assets and thinking, okay, well, what are the, what's the value proposition of these as opposed to those? Uh, we can't, we don't know, you know, what what this set of assets is about. Let's dispose of it, give it away. Um, for a lot of people, um, I might have a chance my arm here with an IT services fellow in the room, <laughs> and so the, uh, there's there's quite a lot of infrastructure type. Um, People around who say, "Well, you know, we, we can just give you more capacity. We can just, you know, we save everything. Just, just put it onto our, our big servers. It could be all right." Um, the roadmap here is arguing that that introduces a lot of noise. It's very difficult to find things. It's also uh, you don't really have control of your budgets if you're if you, you're just putting more infrastructure on top of infrastructure. Anyway, sorry, I better speed up here. Um, so, demand and choose more efficient systems. Um, this is around. Uh, researchers um, kind of trying to trying to grapple more with what they need. Um, if there's this notion that um, solutions, uh, the, the solution providers aren't really giving us what we need, um, if we're not winning on the supply side, then let's try and win from the demand side. So let's try and uh, let's try and be a bit more savvy about um, what we want and uh, the systems that are going to give us what we need. Um, this is a notion that if you're going to, if you've got to decide whether you're in the business of curation or not, as I said earlier. Um, so, and if you are, then you've got to really think about um, designing your 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 solutions for scale. Um, and if you're not, then obviously, as I said before, you, know, you can think of it handing off your assets to to the others who can do this this stuff at scale. And obviously, for doing it at scale, and the economies of scale kick in; it gets cheap. If you are in the business uh, of looking after, you know, being the steward of your digital assets, um, then the the roadmap uh, sort of underlines this idea that no matter how you're doing it, no, no matter what scale you're doing it at, it's a good idea to regard what you're doing as a service, because this notion that curation is an ongoing series of activities, it's not going to stop. It's you know, it, if you're going to look after assets, then you've got to keep at it. And so it's not an ad hoc activity, it's not a one-off thing you do. It's a, if you think about it in terms of the service, and there's a supply side to that service, and there's a demand side, then you can start building a business case around that curation activity, or the curation activity that you're demanding of the service provider. Um, <clears throat> uh, this one is around, uh, uh, we, we sort of touched upon this uh, uh, moments ago, I think, um, trying to build in your requests or sustainable requests for funding um, at the time that you're designing your activity. And that's it goes two ways, I suppose. That's the roadmap saying here to funders, to research councils and to funding councils to um, expect that proposals submitted to them will have a cost component, a life cycle cost component built into them. But from the other side as well, it's, it's you know, researchers uh, can be, can expect of funding councils um, that they will have uh, a, you know, a component built into the funding that will help, that will support curation activity over time. And this last one is about being collaborative and transparent. Um, it's very close to the kind of project ethos about uh, we're only really going to crack this. It's a really hard problem actually knowing how much it costs over time, how to sustain these things, and how much it costs. It's really tricky. Um, it made trickier because. Uh, Historically, people have not been keen to share their costs. Um, you can understand that from a vendor point of view. Obviously, there's competitive advantage for us, the solutions providers to, uh, to to be a bit guarded about costs. But for for institutions, um, one wonders you know, why there isn't more transparency. While we are trying to help each other to say we're doing it this way, it's you know, ingest is costing this much, archival management is costing this much, access is costing this much. Um, you know, that's what we're doing. How about you? But still, people are uh, concerned, you know, anxious about um, being seen to be spending too much 
on preservation and curation because it's a difficult thing to describe. It's a difficult thing to justify internally within the organisation. Um, <coughs> so, uh, there's, there's, do we kind of have a look at the roadmap? I uh, hope it'll be of interest. We've, we've kind of broken it down into various uh, target sort of audiences or actors. Um, and we've got some postcards, and it's all kind of divvied up nicely for you. you kind of have a look. Um, this is the one for, for data users or for searches, reusers. It's a series of actions over the next next five years, and sort of sets out some some ways that we think uh, people might be able to kind of help you know, get towards this this 2020 vision. You'll notice on this one, um, I'm hoping this is kind of the most relevant for most of you here. It's the uh, there's a lot of oops, wobbly. Uh, there's a lot of talk about value here, and there's a lot of talk about you know, demanding um, and, and, and sort of articulating demand. Um, okay, so there's a little bit more on the roadmap before I move on to something else. But um, so these, this is just a sort of another view of the, the kind of 2020 moment, talking about you know market efficiencies. Um, and where, where the sort of roadmap, where this activity is situated in, in a sort of 30 years of, of kind of curation, really. Um, and just to sort of acknowledge that whilst at the moment we may be struggling with uh, digital costs and, digital and the costs and benefits and value, it's, 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 it's been, a, been a, quite a big problem, big challenge over the last 10, 15 years. It's been slow going getting to uh, even where we are now. There are still bigger challenges ahead. In terms of you know, and looking after assets, um, particularly around selection and appraisal, perhaps. And you know, the more stuff we've got, the, 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 as, as the, uh, the data that we actually try to store this gets ever ever bigger, um, we need to think through. And it's a big research topic. You know, how do we do semi-automated selections where the machine is, is, is kind of algorithmically deciding about value? This is something that the researchers can, can help with. I think. Um, help machines to actually weed out what it is we want and don't want. That's a, a very worrying prospect for a lot of researchers. <laughs> Another view of 2020. Um, this is really just to sort of put up a hypothetical conversation between the resource providers, funders, and, and, these, and this entity that I'm calling the Digital Curation Service, which might be you know, an individual or it might be a service. And, uh, and the fact that you know, this, there's there's a sort of relationship between this, this, the focus on sustainability and the focus on efficiency on the resource provider side. Anyway, I think I'll move on because I'm probably running out of time. How much longer have I got, do you think? Well, um, I'll, I'll stop off now at the end, so you, yeah. you're, you can go. I can go a little bit more. Okay. Um, so one of the other things that we hope um, that the 4C project will help with um, is um, sort of goes back to this notion of cost, but which there was then sort of blossoms out to, to other things, but uh, one of the resources we've developed is this thing called the Curation Costs Exchange, and um, this, we hope, uh, will help with that, with that idea of um, institutions sharing costs with each other. One of the big problems over the years about uh, people developing cost models for curation is that um, the, the curation model, uh, sorry, the cost model that is developed for one set of assets or in one institution, it starts off simple, but it very quickly gets complicated. And almost everybody I've heard who's tried to do cost modeling has said, you know, this time, look, we're going to keep it simple. <laughs> but uh, inevitably, um, what happens is it grows in, in complexity. And then, then that cost model doesn't travel very well. You can't, it doesn't seem like you can take a cost model done by one organization and, uh, and sort of run another organization's cost through it very easily. So what we try to do is get around that by just offering a platform uh, that means you can plug your costs in in a relatively simple way, um, trying to normalize them at a quite a high level. Um, and so that uh, you can, if you do come in and you can use our framework, um, you can then start at this quite high level just to say, okay, well, so Institution X uh, looks a little bit like me, that institution, or you know, it's about the same size, dealing with roughly similar assets. You know, they seem to be, Spending 200,000 a year on, on the, their ingest processes, and, and we're spending 400,000. 
Um, so the idea is, you know, you, you start comparing yourself in order to drive down your costs, in order to make efficiencies within your own uh, own environment. There's a lot of information on there as well about um, these, these other kind of related concepts, um, benefits and sustainability and risk and business modeling. So do take a look at that as well. Do, do go in and kind of poke around and, and let us know what you think. Um, so that's some resources. Uh, and this is still on the full C project, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about models now. A little bit more about models, perhaps. Um, and so this is the kind of um, the sort of thinking that we have sort of teased out in the course of the, of the project in terms of um, opinions and, and, and views on curation, perhaps within an organization. And this is, I think, where we get to this piece around uh, how do we start um, setting out this business case, or how do you start arguing for more resources for curation within the institution? And this is to try and understand, you know, who's got what perspective and where they're coming from, and, and how do we design what it is that we we, we try and uh, how we design this, this this advocacy and this business case we want to put. So we're breaking it down into four different sort of very broad roles here, operational roles on the left-hand side and sort of more managerial and, and more strategic roles on the, on the right-hand side with their different focuses on um, you know, what, kind of what's important about the curation process uh, on, on the left-hand side. It's, it's more to do with um, getting on and, and doing the sorts of things that Chris was talking about. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, we're saying it's 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 more about uh, the value proposition, you know, the value, the impact, the printed impact word, I'm hearing so much about these days, um, and the fact that uh, a lot of these people will not be very interested in the whys and wherefores of curation. We're we'll wanting to break it down. It's more like a black box to them. They just want it to work. Uh, they just want it to be effective and efficient and it can work. Um, and so. It's, it kind of breaks down into these sides as well. A kind of a thinking about cost models on the on the more operational side, thinking about benefits models on the right hand side, and kind of encapsulated by an overall economic model, which um, which for us at any rate is it's more to do with this notion of sustainability. It's you've got the costs and benefits and business models, and it's all uh, it's all sort of wrapped up in in what we might broadly be called an economic model. Um, so uh, we've been presenting this, these kinds of things um, and, and more complicated looking models, derivations of those at uh, conferences and people have looked at us and said, you know, what's the point of all this modeling? Um, isn't it too kind of detached? Um, and this might be obvious, but I'll just put this up anyway. Um, I, think, I think models can really help to, and if model is a sort of simplified version of reality, um, then you can abstract that reality. Do, it's, it's easy to do reflection on a, on a, on a more simple kind of framework um, of, a, of an idea rather than the reality. So that's probably too too simplistic to, to spend much more time on. Uh, so the last thing I'll finish with here um, is the digital curation sustainability model, which is um, kind of where we got to at the end of the project with some of the sustainability thinking that was built on on the, those ideas around the models. Uh, with a couple of years. And this is um, our attempt. It builds on some of the previous work, but I'll bother with the provenance. But um, this is our attempt to kind of sketch out um, the sort of component parts of the thinking that you might need in order to, to, to work through. Um, either do a sort of self assessment of, um, of how sustainable one's digital curation activities are. Oh, and indeed, by inference, one's digital assets. Step through these 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 um, component parts of this model um, with the help of the text, the accompanying text to this model, um, and just to sort of you know give yourself a kind of check, you know, a, a sort of health check on on the sustainability. Or you could use this for sustainability planning purposes. You step through these parts and, um, and come up with a sustainability plan for your organisation for your curation service. And it probably, I don't know how, how sort of readable this, this diagram is, but um, it kind of breaks down into four different parts, really. That's the, um, it's what we're calling the sustainability context, which is these, uh, these kind of three um, circles there. 
with digital assets um, being right at the focus, right at the sort of heart of, of this, this model. Um, and so the digital sustainability context is almost the, the kind of things that you've got to accept or the things you've got to sort of work around, work with, navigate around. You've got your the assets are the things you know that you're focused on. The organisation probably has its constraints, uh, has its own dynamic you've got to work with. Um, the stakeholders um, that you know, can change these things. It's not like they're completely rigid, but um, you've got to start somewhere. And so these these three kind of entities, if you like, um, uh, we're calling a sustainability context. The second bit is the investment life cycle, which um, which kind of sketches out in a pretty diagrammatic way, this notion that at some point um, some, some trigger event, some threat or some opportunity will occur where some decision will have to be made around um, the, in the level of investment that is required to continue um, sustaining curation activity. It might be all sorts of things. It might be a technical issue. It might be a financial issue. It might be a business issue. You know, it could be, be anything. But there's a gap in the circle that, that represents this kind of sustainability gap, and, uh, and that's the point at which uh, an investment uh, of some description or an action will need to be taken. Uh, the third one down here is sustainability variables. Um, this is what we're describing as the kinds of um, entities that that you can. Uh, to have an effect upon you can you can just think about you know how to how to respond to these different variables um, in order to increase the prospects for sustainability. People can't, they can't see them there, but um, it's these things. It's these five on the arms of the star here. Um, so appraisal and selection, you can take tactical decisions around that. Um, governance, you can change the nature of your governance in order to improve prospects as well. Uh, value you can work on and you can you can think through these notions of value very closely tied in with the appraisal and selection part obviously but you can yes you, you can make the case within your organization or um, about uh, what these assets uh, that you have in front of you and you want to curate um, resources you can find more resources you can um, if you, if you uh, argue in the right way and the motivation um, or incentives to, to curate um, actually uh, instilling these these incentives within the organization um, there are ways and means of, of, of arguing for that so these are what we're calling the sustainability variables um, and then the last of the components here um, uncertainties or risks management um, no matter how one goes about sustainability planning, it's pretty clear that uh, you can't um, predict everything that's going to happen. So it's trying to build in um, some leeway, a contingency within uh, your uh, curation activities, within within your funding, within your staffing, that kind of thing, uh, in order to uh, try and deal with those contingencies that come along. Quite a difficult thing, to actually, to, to, to argue put into a business case a lot of the time, but um, there's a lot, there's a huge, huge amount of literature about risk management out there, and um, we haven't s seek to, uh, sought to repeat that literature, but it's, um, I think it's certainly something that needs a little bit more attention within curation activity. So um, those are some of the resources that came out of the 4C project, and a little bit of a sort of a hint about uh, the way that we've been thinking about sustainability issues within that project. There are lots and lots of other uh, ways we could go with this, uh, this discussion even as well, and obviously JISC, um, as, as opposed to the, the European Commission funded um, 4C project, uh, is focusing a lot on, on research data management. We've, some of you may have heard about this research data spring that JISC are funding, um, so there's been a lot of activity around research data management um, this year and next year. And we've got this digital curation centre, so uh, another um, great, great you know, body of work uh, a lot of resources there to help people with their um, data management issues and some other links as well. So, it's me done. Thank you. Thank you.